Take your Bibles again, if you would. 2 Samuel chapter 19 this time. 2 Samuel chapter 19. Appreciate Brother John reading from uh, chapter 16, I think it was, about Shimei and David. We're going to go to chapter 19 now. 2 Samuel 19, verse number 16. Verse 16, And Shimei, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite, which was of Baharim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Zeba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And they went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gerah, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan and said unto the king, Let not my Lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my Lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned before there, sorry, for thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come this the first Sorry, come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet the Lord, the King. All right, I want you to draw your attention to verse number 19. He says at the end there that the King should take it to his heart. And I want to preach this morning on this subject. Don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just arrest our attention. I pray that uh, we would be mindful of what you want to say to us this morning. And I pray, God, that you would take me, that you would loose my tongue, my lips, that you would anoint me. Help me to be a blessing, Lord. I need you to be a blessing, to be a help to thy people this morning. And so, Lord, I pray that you would speak to all of us about this subject in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I was uh, reading through this a few weeks ago, and the Lord gave me this verse and this thought about not taking things to heart. Brother John read there back in chapter 16 that when David and his servants were going out of Jerusalem, remember Absalom uh, had, uh, had uh, performed the coup and he was taking over the kingdom. Uh, David and his, uh, his men and his servants were leaving and Shimei the Benjamite comes out and starts throwing stones and cursing David and uh, you know having a go at him and throwing dust. And uh, don't you like Abishai and Joab? The first thing they thought is let's go and cut his head off and... And uh, how many times David says, you sons of Zariah, you're too hard for me. What am I to do with you? And, and uh, it's very noble to want to protect the king. I get that. But David's like, you know, if the Lord's allowed it, then, then let Shimei curse. And now we get to the point where David's being brought back into the kingdom. We preached uh, about this a few weeks ago, more so about the second coming of Jesus. But we see here that the king's returning. Judah's come before him. They're conducting him over. And here comes Shimei. And Shimei bows before him and, and asks him basically to, to forgive him. He repents and, and says, uh, you know, don't, don't remember that which uh, thy servant did perversely. And uh, he said that the king should take it to heart. He's saying, David, don't take it to heart. Forgive me. Uh, I, I, I want your forgiveness. Don't, don't kick me out. Don't kill me. And of course, David didn't. He forgave him and, and allowed him to stay in the kingdom. But how many of us in life have have had something perversely said about us or done or something negative done about us and we've taken it to heart and God says this morning don't don't take it to heart don't like Shimei who cursed and threw stones you may have someone in your life that threw stones and said something about you and to you and you know done all sorts of things and whether it's a family member or a, 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 a brother or sister in Christ or whatever it is and and God says don't take that to heart and I'm glad that God gave me that. A few weeks ago, I caught up with some brethren and, uh, and the Lord had given me this word. Don't take it to heart. Don't take what people say about you to heart. Don't take what people do to you. Don't take it to heart. Uh, God, God, Listen, God will take care of everything. And as I was thinking about that, I want to I give you this thought. And I want you to think about this. When you take to heart the evils experienced in life, it robs your heart of the good that should flow from it. When you take to heart the evils, the perverse things that are done and said of you, when you take that to heart, it robs your heart of the good things that should flow from it. Because the Bible says that there are some things that ought to flow from our heart. You know, when you take things to heart, it robs you of your effectiveness. 
When you start dwelling on what people have done, what people have said, it robs you of your effectiveness. It robs you of your ability to function. Why is that? Because you're always dwelling on what such and such a person said. I was listening to something yesterday and, and uh, I'm not going to give any names or anything, but it goes along the lines of what I was saying this morning, how you've got this toing and froing backwards and forwards between different pastors who are attacking each other and accusing each other of different things. And, and uh, th- this, this uh, pastor in Sydney had rang up another pastor in, in Queensland and and uh, he had recorded it on his phone and, and the conversation was there and this guy in Sydney had been falsely accused so he said it from, from this other guy and, and, he's, and he's rang up, there were three phone calls that he made and, and they're toing and froing and, and, and he's trying to, this guy in Sydney's trying to get this fella over here to admit that he's falsely accused him and blah blah blah, going on, going on and going on and going on and going on and I thought nothing's happening here, nothing's happening here. Now, while there, there are times in our life where we want to defend ourselves, I mean, don't you feel like you want to defend yourself when someone did or say, says something about you, you want to defend yourself? But let me ask you this question. What did Jesus do when he was falsely accused? He, yeah, exactly. Jesus didn't say a word. He, he, he railed not, he reviled not. He just let them falsely accuse him and he just stood there and he took it. And I just don't understand today why so many Christians want to defend themselves. They jump on the phone, there's argy-bargy, there's toing and froing. Oh, you said this about me and this is not true and blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And and nothing, any any good is coming from it. And like I said this morning, the, the devil is having a heyday with it because you've got these supposedly two leaders of a church at each other. And while they're so consumed with you said this, no, you said this, you don't believe this, and you don't believe that, and they're going backwards and forwards, God's people in those churches are being affected. But not just in those local churches now being affected, there are there are Christians, you get this, there are Christians all over the world that are associated with these two men and their churches that are now being affected, affected by the stuff that's going on backwards and forwards. Nothing ever good comes from it. And the Lord gave me that years ago when, when, when I had things said and letters sent and USB sent around and recording secretly recorded and all this sort of stuff. And the Lord said, just don't do anything about it. Just don't say anything. I never rang anybody. I never wrote letters. I never got in contact. Oh, you're saying this. Why are you saying it? Oh, carrying on backwards and forwards. Do you know why? Because once you take things to heart, it robs your heart of the good things that flow from it. So don't take things to heart. And I don't know what it is in your life, but just just allow God to deal with that. Let me read you some verses here and we'll get into some thoughts in a minute. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23, the Bible says this, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart, he said, because out of your heart flow the issues of life. There are a lot of issues in life. I mean, you can take on issues here and issues there. And and this person said this and this person did that. And oh, look what's happening over here. And there's so much things that can invade and bombard your heart that if you take it to heart, it's going to rob you. Listen, you'll end up with spiritual heart failure. Because you're being so burdened in your heart that you should, God said, don't take it to heart, guard your heart, because out of here flows from here the issues of life. All right? Now, in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 45, it says this Jesus said this, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of your heart. So what is abundantly in here is going to flow out of here. I can tell you where you're at spiritually by what comes out of here. You know that? You, you, can, tell, you, can, you can tell where anyone is at spiritually by what flows out of here. I tell you, today there's so much corruptness going on in Christianity today. So how do you know that? Because you listen to what Christians are saying. And what comes out of the mouth flows from the heart. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart, and there's an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart. Remember this morning I talked about deposits and withdrawals? 
you can deposit into your heart good things. And then out of your heart will come good things. But if you take on the issues of life and you store up in the abundance of your heart the issues of life and the, the perverse things of life, guess what's going to flow out of your mouth? The perverse and wicked things of life. So it's your choice. Jesus said this. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can tell where someone's at by what they say. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 18, Jesus said this, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed, now get this, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. All right, so what comes, and, and by the way, this is on the back of uh, the disciples eating the corn, you know, they kicked it and they didn't wash their hands and the religious crowd are having a crap. Oh, you know, uh, they, they're taking this and they're eating it, it's going to defile. No, no, it's not what comes in that's defiling, Jesus said, it's what's coming out that's defiling. Because out of the heart proceed all these things, evil thoughts. Where does murder first start? Murder first starts with this. People dwell on it, they put it in their heart, and then they start talking about it, and then they go out and do it. Yeah. So out of the perverse things of the heart, things happen, and that's what defiles a man. So we've got to be careful, folks, that we've got to put a guard on our heart and make sure that the negatives don't invade the heart, but the positives come in, and the positives will come out. By the way, this is not a positive thinking message, but hey, the Bible's a positive thing, amen? And when we put the Bible into our heart, guess what's going to come out of our heart? The Bible. What's good about that? Everything's good about that, praise the Lord. In John chapter 7 and verse number 38, Jesus said this, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Out of the belly, out of the heart, is going to flow rivers of living water. Listen, when you take to heart... The wicked things, the perverse things, things that are said about you, things that are done to you, when you take that to heart, you are going to minimize the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Why is that? Because he gets grieved. He gets grieved. So, so, so Shimei comes to David and says, David, please don't take it to heart. And God is saying this morning, whatever is in your life, don't take it to heart. Once you take it to heart, it's going to rob you of the blessing that is to come to you and that should flow from you. Remember Jesus, uh, God said to Abraham, thou shalt be a blessing. Remember that in Genesis chapter 12, when God called Abraham out there, Abram at the start there. And he said, you know, I'm going to do all these things for you, Abram. And, but, you know, you're going to be a blessing. You know why some people can't be a blessing to other people? It's because there's too much rubbish in the heart. And that stifled them and has stopped them from being a blessing to other people. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 15, we know it so well, it talks about the root of bitterness. And when you take to heart the evils that is said and even done to you, it births bitterness in you. And you have to be so careful. Listen, if you've got bitterness in your heart about anything or anyone... Allow the Spirit of God, allow God himself to root that out of you and jerk it out of you and get rid of it because bitterness does no good to anybody. As a matter of fact, you can tell again through the mouth when people are bitter by what they say. Do you know Jesus said that every person is going to give an account for what they say? Think about that. There are books in heaven, there are conversations that are being recorded. Did you know that? Have a look, go with me to the book of Malachi for a minute, the book of Malachi, and I'll show you. And if this doesn't wake you up and, and make you sit up and take note that I've got to be careful what I say, then nothing will. Jesus said that no idle thing should come out of your mouth because you're going to give an account for that. Now look at what he says here in Malachi chapter 3. Look at verse number 16, Malachi 3, 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another... And the Lord hearkened and heard it. In other words, that word hearkened is this. It's like, it's like Jesus is listening and you've said something and you went, oh, something, something's got his attention. You've said something and he's hearkened and now he's heard it. Now look at what he says here. 
uh, he hearkened to her, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Do you know who the silent listener is at every conversation? God is. He is listening to what you're saying. And by the way, you might not say it verbally. He is so good, he can hear it before you even say it. Because it comes from here. So, so there are scribes in heaven. I don't know, probably angels, who knows. And they're sitting down there and they are recording everything that you say. They got a lot of books. And the books were open. Remember that? Yeah, we're going to be with all of eternity in, in the presence of Jesus. I think the books are going to take up a big part of our time when it comes to Judgment Day. Oh, Paul Stevenson, do you remember when you said this? And by the way, there's not going to be, oh, Lord, I really don't remember saying that. <laughs> He's like, sorry, I pulled you out. And I don't know, I don't know how it's going to play out. He may have a big screen, right? And he's going to replay it. And he'll be like, oh, I remember when I said that. I remember when I, I was talking to another brother and I flippantly said something and, or I gossip. Oh, gossip. Yeah, we haven't heard a message on gossip for a while. Um, but you know what I mean? Listen, everything that we say is recorded. Yeah. Everything. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Got a big hard drive. Got a big hard drive up there. That's for, <laughs> that's for sure. And he doesn't need techies to look after it either. He's got it all sorted out. It doesn't crash. Hallelujah. <laughs> It, it's, it's, it works very well. It works very well. So, so let, me just, let, let me just say, what are some important things now that, that is to flow from our heart that will not flow if we take perverse things to heart? If, you're, if you are someone that is prone to wearing your heart on your sleeve, as they say, or you take things to heart, these things are going to be hindered in your life. Now, I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. I beg your pardon, Romans chapter 10. And I want you to have a look at this. And the first thing is this, is that faith is of the heart, right? Faith is of the heart. So if you take the perverse things, now it is sad to have to say it's unfortunate, but there are Christians that say and do perverse things. You might not believe that, but let me tell you, it's out there. It is out there. Forget the perverse things of the world because that's the world and the world is going to do and say perverse things. Is that right? Do you know I saw today that there was some Mardi Gras happening. I, I can't remember where it was. And, uh, you know, all the homosexuals are sold. Oh, they're dancing down the parade. I think it was in America. And out in the front is this little child dressed up in the rainbow, kind of twirling around, a transvestite child, it said. And they got all the accolades and all the, the, the hurrahs from that, that gay and lesbian crowd because here's this transgender child out in the front of all these filthy, perverse people parading themselves around. But you know what? They're doing what wicked people do. But it's a sad day when Christians end up being perverse and saying perverse things. And if you're going to take that to heart, then it's going to rob your heart of faith. Have a look at Romans chapter 10, verse number 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So what is in your heart? The, in your heart is the word of faith. In your heart is faith. Right? When you take things to heart, it's going to rob your heart of the faith that should flow from it. And if faith is not flowing from your heart, by the way, faith is, faith is this. Faith is, is, uh, is heard in what you say and faith is seen in what you do. All right, Because you pray by faith. You remember in Hebrews chapter 11 a few weeks ago, we looked at by faith and through faith. And by faith we do things, but it's through faith that we believe that God will do things. Well, in order for God to do things, we have to, through faith, pray to him. And if faith is not in the heart, if the heart has been robbed of faith, and if doubt is in the heart, and perverseness is in the heart, and bitterness is in the heart, then it's going to rob you of the faith and the things that your faith ought to produce. Amen? Amen? Uh, go with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And by the way, let me tell you what Satan's master plan is. Satan's master plan is for you to be negatively affected by the perverse things of life. Satan wants you to take to heart the negative things. 
But you know, this is what we ought to do. We ought to take the negative and turn it into a positive. Amen. We ought to take the wrong things that are done, the wrong things that are said, and we ought to allow God to turn that around and use it to strengthen us and not weaken us. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 11. Uh, look at verse number, um, I'm not even, yeah, Mark chapter 11. Look at verse number 22. Jesus saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, that's a pretty powerful statement right there. And that is a statement that certain sectors of Christendom have taken and have gone in such an extreme that you can name it and claim it and blab it and grab it and do all this sort of stuff that if you speak it into existence, it'll come. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying if you have faith in God, your faith in God will produce what you need to do. Your faith in God will produce what God needs to do for you. But he said this, you've got to have faith in the heart and not doubt. You know, the sad thing is, is that often in life, the doubts invade our hearts. Listen, if doubt affects the head, that's one thing. But let faith flow from the heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. So you've got to make sure that when, you, if you take to heart the evil said and done, it will rob you of your faith. And you will not be effective. Does God want you to be effective? Yes. Absolutely. Does he want you to function in life? Absolutely. So stop. We'll stop taking things to heart. Don't take it to heart. Just let it go. Let it go, as that song is. Let it go. <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like breaking out in a song right there. I've never even seen the film Frozen, and I want to sing "Let It Go, Let It Go." But anyway, let it go. Anyway, let's have a look at the second thing. Go to Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. <laughs> so not only is faith of the heart, but love is of the heart. Now remember, if you, allow, if you allow the things said and done, if you take it to heart, it's going to rob you of the love that flows from the heart. Have a look at Romans chapter 5 and verse number 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. We all agree, don't we, that love is important. We all know that God is love and and love is God, and, 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 and the Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, that, that as he is, so are we in this world. So, and that's in the context of love. So if God is love, and he is, and he's many other things, by the way, if God is love, then we are to be like he is in this world. But if we take to heart the perverse things of life, it's going to rob the heart of the love that should flow from it. So how can I be effective in this life to you if I take on board and take to heart the, the bad things that are said about me or the bad things that are done to me? Has anyone ever had bad things said about them? Has anyone ever had bad things done to them? Well, if you haven't, God bless you. If you have, don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. Because I tell you, it's a robber. It's a robber. It'll come in and it'll, it'll squeeze the very life from your heart. No love, no acting like God. If, you, if there's no love here, if it's been, if your heart, and this is what happens, we all hear about a hard heart, don't we? Right? If you take on board those things in life, your heart becomes hardened, and then the love cannot flow from it. Remember, out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. This spake here of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost said here that he sheds abroad in our heart the love of God. So think about who is affected the most if you take the heart the wrong things. The Holy Spirit of God is going to be affected in your life. There's no faith and there's no love. So we have to be very, very careful about that. Go with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I'll give you the third thing. So number one, faith is of the heart. Number two, love is of the heart. Number three, joy. Joy. You know why there's a lot of joyless Christians around? Because they've taken to heart too many wrong things. They've taken it to heart. They've, they've allowed the, the wickedness of the world, the wickedness, of, unfortunately, of some Christians to rob them of that blessing. They've taken it to heart. They've dwelt on it. They've meditated on it. They've fumed on it. They've fussed about it. 
they, they, they've allowed it to, to sneak in and rob them right under their nose of the blessings that ought to flow from it. Well, let's not allow that in our life. Look at Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So believing is of the heart. So God wants to fill you with all joy. All right? No joy, no shouting. No joy, no praising. Do you know why some of you perhaps find it hard to praise and shout? Because you've had the joy robbed because you've taken to heart too many wrong things. Don't allow the wrong things of life to rob you of that joy. God wants us to be joyful people. Why is that? So that we can be seen of other people when we shout and pray. No, listen, we don't do what we do in church. I, you know what? I don't want to praise the Lord in church just so that John sees me and says, oh, wow, Pastor Stevens has really got it happening today. Man, I better get my act together. <laughs> it's, it's like in some churches, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, all the hands go raised up and everyone's looking at, oh, <laughs> no, I tell you, if you raise, you know, all the antennas go up. <laughs> hey, if you want to, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. If you want to raise your hands in church, do it. I think it's a it's a biblical thing to do. But I don't do it because John does it, and you shouldn't do it because I do it. You do it because the Spirit of God moves in you to do it. And I tell you, if you take to heart the wrong things of life, it's going to stifle the Holy Spirit and there's no joy there. There's not going to be any praise or shouting. And who's going to receive the joy and the praise and the shouting? God himself. Do you know all over this country, God's people are not praising and shouting under God? Who deserves the shout and the praise? Because they have allowed thieves to come in and rob their heart of those things. Joy is of the heart. I'll give you one more thing. Would you turn to Matthew, please? Matthew chapter 13, I think it is. Matthew 13. Oh, I beg your pardon. Matthew 18. Can't even read my own writing. I did. <laughs> I got that this morning in my devotions. <laughs> I had to write that one down. I had to write that one down. Look at Matthew. Look at Matthew. I, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read everything. All right, but there was a there was a servant that owed his master ten thousand talents. Right, and he came to him. He said, oh, "I can't pay. It. Have mercy." And the, and the servant said, "All right, I'll I'll, uh, I'll forgive you of that debt." Well, that same servant had someone else that served him who owed him. I think it was ten pence. It was only a small amount. And and the servant that was forgiven a lot. Grab hold of the servant that owed him a little and just gave him a hard time. Said, you owe me, you owe me, and actually threw him into prison. And so anyway, the others heard about that and went to the boss and said, you know that guy you forgave a lot? Yeah. Well, he had someone that owed him only a little and he, and he threw him into prison. And so let's pick it up. Have a look at... Uh, Verse number 31, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy, on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So now look, look at this. This is what Jesus said. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his a brother his their trespasses. Think about that. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Amen. Jesus forgave you a huge debt. He forgave you. Why can't you forgive your brother the smallest things? That's what he's saying. But when you take to heart the wrong things done and the wrong things said... It robs you of the forgiveness that should flow from the heart. Notice in the verse, he was thrown to the tormentors. Do you know there's Christians all over the world that are tormented today, whether it's in their, in their mind, in their body, in their spirit, whatever, 
They are tormented because they can't forgive. They've taken to heart things that have been done and said. If you can't forgive, don't even attempt to go before God and say, Lord, will you forgive me of this? Because he won't do it. That's what he said. Isn't that what Jesus said? I mean, let's remind ourselves again. Verse 34, And the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father, is he your heavenly Father? Do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Ouch. I think by that it's very important that we don't take things to heart. When you take things to heart, when you take the perverse things done and said about you to heart, it robs you of the good that should flow from your heart. Robs you of your faith, your love, your joy, your forgiveness. You need to guard your heart. And don't allow it, don't allow anybody. Don't, don't even, listen, let me just share something with you. I, 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 I like to hang around people that are upbeat and positive. I think that's important. The negatives from people drain you. Now I know in ministry you've got to get around certain people. We've got to help everybody. But who here understands is that when you're around the negative crowd all the time, you leave there and it's like, oh man, I need someone to top me up, you know what I mean? And so you've got to be around those that lift you up, those that, that strengthen you, those that are helpful to you. If you're around negativity all the time, then listen, if you've got no one, then I tell you, go to God, you know what I mean? But if you're someone that wants to be used of God, used of God to encourage people. All right, and don't take to heart the things that people say about you or even the things that people do to you. Jesus Christ is quite capable of taking care of you. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures today. Lord, I pray that we would take to heart the things that you say to us. Lord, we don't want to take to heart the bad things. Thank you for the account in David's life when he had to deal with Shimei. And then Shimei came and repented before him. And Lord, I pray that that would be us. I pray, God, if there's even one here today that has taken to heart the perverse, the wicked, the bad things, the wrong things that people have done and said, I pray that even today that they would get that sorted out and get it right before you so that from their heart can flow the things that are necessary. And so, God, I pray and commit this time to you and commit your people to you and pray that you would help them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.